Materials are what give your props their look. The color, texture, shine, and even glow. In this video, we'll explore the material panel in Escape Simulator 2 and show you how to create, copy, and tweak materials to make your props look exactly how you want. A material is a collection of settings and images that tells the game engine how to display the surface of a prop to the player. It can define the base texture image or the color, how shiny or rough the surface appears, how it reacts to light, the transparency, so whether it's opaque like paint on a wall or semi-invisible like frosted glass, whether it has glowing or emissive parts. You assign all these properties to a material and then apply it to the prop of your choice. This is the Material Properties panel where you can edit and adjust the look of the material. The base map is the main texture applied to your prop surface. Think of it like wallpaper on a wall, text on a note, or an image in a painting frame. If your prop was going to be a solid color, then you would keep your base map as the default solid white texture. So the base map color lets you color the entire prop or tint your base texture without modifying the texture file itself. Set it to white to leave the base texture unaltered. You can adjust the color using the color picker. Alpha or transparency controls how see-through your prop is. Values less than maximum, which is 255, allow for transparency, as long as your base texture is a PNG that includes transparent areas. Lowering the alpha to 254 makes the transparent parts of the texture invisible. The texture scale changes how many times your texture repeats across the prop. Keep the X and Y values equal to maintain proportion, or make one larger than the other to stretch or skew the image. Texture Offset shifts the texture along the prop's surface. It's usually set between 0 and 1, positive or negative. For example, an offset of 0.25 moves the texture a quarter of the way along the chosen axis. Here's how to create a material. You can create a new material, from the Assets tab of the menu, and with the Material filter selected at the top, click the plus button. You can also copy a material from a prop. Open the Props menu, place the prop of your choice, and click the Paintbrush icon in the Properties panel. This creates a copy of the material that you can edit. Give it a name, and then it will show up in your Assets tab. To duplicate an existing material, Open it in its Materials panel, then use the Create Duplicate Material button at the bottom of the panel. To edit the texture of a material, in the Material Properties tab, click the paintbrush next to the texture icon to open it in an image editor. By default, the image will open in Microsoft Paint, but you can change this default in your Room options, or you can open the texture directly from your UGC folder. After it's open, make your edits, then save the texture to overwrite the original, and you will see that it automatically updates in your scene. Let's show a few demonstrations. First, let's make a new red material, and we're going to apply it to this sphere. From the Assets tab, click on the Materials filter at the top, and then click New Material. I will name this material Red and then I'll click on the base map color and choose a shade of red using the color picker. I'm going to then add the sphere to my room, and then I will drag and drop my new red material onto the sphere. Next, I'm going to tint a prop that's already in the editor, so I'm going to apply a tinted color to this carpet. Add the carpet to your room, and then click the paintbrush next to its material to copy it. I'm going to call it Carpet. The carpet material will automatically open, or you can always open it from your Assets tab. Click the Base Color Map, and I'm going to use the Color Picker to change the color to blue. Next, 
Let's make a new material, but with a custom texture. So here, I'll take this cylinder, and I want to add this star image to it, which I've saved to my UGC folder. I'm going to create a new material, and I will add my star as the base map. I'll then drag and drop the material to my cylinder so I can preview it. See, this isn't exactly what I want, so I'm going to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to change the texture scaling on both axes to 10, so the star pattern is going to repeat 10 times as often. I'm also going to give it a yellow base color map. Similar to my cylinder with the stars that I just created, I'm also going to replace this wall pattern with a seamless repeating wallpaper. Seamless, or tessellated textures, are patterns that repeat and connect seamlessly across a surface that don't show visible edges when placed next to each other. They're perfect for floors, walls, fabrics, or any kind of repeating pattern. Scaling your base map lets you repeat these patterns across a prop. Next, let's edit a texture to add some text to this paper. This is a blank paper prop, which can be found in the Dracula theme group where there are blank papers with no writing in dark, light, and burned variations. So this is perfect for our purpose because we just want to add text to make a new note. Add the paper of your choice, and then copy its material with the paintbrush icon. Change the alpha in the base color map to 254, and this makes the texture visible. Click on the paintbrush next to the texture icon in the materials panel to open the texture in MS Paint to edit it. You can also open it in any other program of your choosing. I'm going to add some text to my note using the text tool within Paint. I can choose the font, size, I can reposition. And then when I'm done, I'll save and return to the game you'll see that my note updates automatically with my new texture. Next, I'm gonna open this texture from the Dracula chair and selectively edit the color. First, I'm going to add the chair to the scene and then I will copy the material. I'll click the paintbrush to copy and open the texture in paint, but I'll close that because I'm actually going to edit this texture in a website called photop.com which is a browser-based image editing program. So this is totally free, it's ad-based, and there is no download necessary. You can do it directly from your browser. So I'm going to open my UGC folder from my menu, I'm going to find my chair texture, then I'm going to drag and drop it into the browser tab where I have Photo P open. So from here, I'll go to the image menu, adjustments, and replace color. I'll click on the color swatch and then select an area of my image that has the color I want to replace. So somewhere in this red area. From the replace color pop-up, I can then change the hue, saturation, and lightness of my desired chair color. If you need to adjust the sensitivity of the match to the color you selected, you can adjust the fuzziness. I'm going to make mine a darker saturated green and then click OK. Then I'll go to the file menu, export as PNG, and I will replace and overwrite my original texture in my UGC folder. Let's add an image to this plane with a transparent background. I'm going to make a new material I'm going to add my semi-transparent image as the base map texture. I'm going to set my alpha to 254, or one less than the maximum amount, in order to accept transparency. Then, I will drag and drop this material onto my plane. If you want to adjust shininess, you can play with the metallic and smoothness sliders. We can also make invisible, glass, or metallic props. To make a material invisible, set its alpha to zero. You can make a frosted glass material by giving it a 
medium gray base color, giving the alpha a value of around 50, and then turn its smoothness to zero. Let's make this sphere metallic gold. I'm going to create a material. I'll give it a somewhat darker yellow base color. I will turn its metallic all the way up to one, and I'll put its smoothness at 0.75. When working with a complex prop, you might sometimes want to locate and edit a specific area of the prop, but you might have trouble finding where to edit this on the texture. We're going to replace the texture temporarily with a UV map, similar to the ones pictured. UV maps allow you to locate the color and coordinate of the spot on the prop you wish to edit. Apply the UV map, find the coordinate of where you want to make the change, then go back and replace the UV map with your original texture. And then we're going to open the texture for editing. In my image editing program, I'm going to add my UV map as a new layer. Then I'm going to edit my texture at the coordinates I took note of earlier, such as adding text or adding another image. I'll then go back and apply my new texture as the base map for my material. Let's talk about some common materials that you might want to make while creating puzzles. So to create phone or keypad buttons, add a simple plane prop to each button and make it a child of the button so that it moves with the button waypoint up and down. Then each plane gets a separate material with a different number assigned as the base map. Number dials. Add numbers along the side of the blue cylinder for dial locks. Use the UV mapping trick we talked about earlier to find where your numbers should be placed. You can also make quick and easy sprite sheets to use with a display. For this, I'm going to be using Microsoft Excel. You could also use something like Google Sheets or any other spreadsheet software that you want to use. So I'm going to create a grid, and on this grid, I'm going to add numbers, letters, or states. Once you're done, copy and paste into Paint or into any other image editor, and then save the image. So as an example, I'm going to create a number sprite. I'm going to add into Microsoft Excel the numbers 0 to 99, this is going to allow me to have a lock monitor on a display that goes higher than the 0 to 9 values that come on the default sprite sheet. So let's say that I have a dial that goes up to 50. By default, my display won't show past 9. So using this sprite sheet will allow me to show all numbers that are coming from my dial. Instead of a keypad or number sprite sheet, you can also create a keyboard and letter sprite sheet. So back in Excel, I can add my alphabet from A to Z. I'm then going to copy this range of cells and paste it into remove.bg, which is a free website that detects and removes the background of an image. Save this image, and then assign it to the sprite sheet of your lock. Then, assign all of your keyboard buttons with corresponding outputs. You can also easily create two-state sprites for tick buttons for things like on-off or red-green. So here I'm just going to create a quick one where on the left side I have locked written in red, and on the right side I have unlocked written in green. If I assign this to a lock connected to a tick button, it will show locked when the button is at zero or unpressed, and it will show unlocked when the button is pressed and sending a one. So there are many resources online to find free textures to use for your props. These are just a few, and also some free image editors. Today we used Photopea, but these other ones are good as well.
Normal maps give your props surface the illusion of depth by simulating bumps and grooves, but without adding extra geometry. So here, I have two planes, and both planes use the same base texture, but the one on the right has a normal map applied. And you can see how it appears more detailed and textured, even though it's still a flat surface. You can download normal maps from an online texture resource of your choice, or you can generate your own from your existing texture. Here's how to do it in photop.com, which is the online image editor we used previously. Open your base texture or drag and drop it onto the PhotoP browser window. Go to the filter menu, 3D, normal map. You can adjust the settings if needed, and then save the new image to your room folder by going to File, Export. Back in the Material panel, assign the image to the Normal Map slot of your material. The Normal Map scale controls how strong the effect appears. Increasing the scale makes the simulated bumps and grooves seem deeper and more pronounced while lowering it makes the surface appear flatter. Mask maps are specific to Unity's high-definition render pipeline. Mask maps combine several types of maps that define surface information into one single texture. These maps then get converted into four different color channels, and they then combine into the mask map. To efficiently combine your individual maps into one, you can use Unity's built-in tools, or you can download a mask map packer. There are several available for free on GitHub. Emission defines how your prop glows, especially in low lighting. You can adjust the color of this emission using the emissive color map. Adjust the emissive scale to have your prop glow more or less. In Transparency settings, you will find the Render Offset, and this adjusts which transparent surfaces render in front of others. So this is useful when there are multiple transparent props overlapping. So that's all for this video. I hope you learned how to customize the look of your props, and we will see you in the next video.